Welcome to Ein Hut in Israel, a small village of artists of all kinds. The special thing for Gita and I when we visit this place today is that it was a place that Gita used to live during the 90s. And when she lived here, she befriended the artist Benjamin Levy and his wife, Hannah. Today we are going to visit Benjamin and Hannah. So welcome on this little trip into their world. Hello. Right behind me, behind this door, does the magician Benjamin Levy, the artist, and his wife Hannah live. It's quite an adventure to approach their world, but nevertheless, that's what we are doing now. And it's not without any danger. We must go and take responsibility for ourselves when we pass that door. And now you can be my witness. Please follow. a lot of magic to it. You don't know really what this is all about. Are these people coming from another planet? We don't know. Is this a coffee pot with a man? Or is it a man with a pot, uh, coffee pot? What is it? Is this a self-portrait of Benjamin Levy? We don't know but we are going to find the answers. Please follow me. And as you can see here, in front of us, part of the Garden of Eden. And again, the mystical self-portrait of the magician with the coffee pot on the top of his head. Benjamin Levy's um, relationship to women. Most of his women are bare-breasted, but also they are, I don't know, maybe they are uh, an exposure of Benjamin's inner feminine principle. We must find out. If you turn around, you can see the man on the other side what is this? What is it? We don't know. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having us here. My pleasure. And you know, just to come here is like coming into another planet. It's like coming into a complete other world. And um, I've been wondering for, you know, I saw you first time four years ago, I think it was. We visited you here in Einhard. And it's strange because all your pictures and your sculptures 
have haunted me ever since. Where do your images and all your art come from? I tell you, it, it comes without thinking. I just do it, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't uh, make plans. Maybe uh, the work is already in my feeling and just I put it down in the paper or in the canvas or a sculptures. You know, I don't uh, usually think in advance. It's only when, when I have interviews. Then I, I remember thing from my childhood, from what I saw, from my dreams. Yeah, but uh, usually I don't put a, a thought of the ideas, but I put a thought how to accomplish it. Also your relationship to your sweet wife, Hannah, must have meant something to your art. For sure, you know, uh, I would say 80% of the women are Hana. <laughs> yeah. So she's in fact your real model. For yes. Your, yeah. You know, I met Hana when I was 16. Oh, so you've been together since then? Yeah, wow. so how many years? For the, uh, this is uh, since about 57. Yeah. The year 57. Wow. Yeah. Now, yeah. So when did you move to uh, New York? In 65. In 1965. 1965. And stayed there until you came back in? in uh, five years ago, but uh, we used to come every summer mm -hmm. with our four children yeah. for a few months. For the summer months, and when they grew up, we even longer than summer vacation. Yeah. You lived in uh, New York for many years. Yes. And at some point, the rock band. The Rolling Stones were, were yeah. visiting your your gallery. In my studio, yes. And you didn't even know who? No, I didn't know because I didn't follow no, no. The, uh, that kind of songs. But it was quite interesting. Uh, they bought some works and also the manager of the uh, Beatles mm. uh, came and bought from me some uh, work. Uh, Hannah told me also that there were some women, some of their wives, Rolling Stones' wives. Were yeah, uh, I was impressed <laughs> because she came with a thin shirt and probably she operated on her bosoms. And it was quite interesting to see how she walks and her bosom was standing up like advertising mm. her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that was one of the more interesting meetings in <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think a body of a woman is much more pretty than a body of a man. But I always spend uh, couples because I like a relationship. 
you know, mm -hmm. and that attracts me. But it is, there's also a lot of vitality with the women, with her breasts. With the bosoms, yeah. yeah. So. You know, that's uh, been developed uh, naturally from my uh, childhood. And uh, I, I do it now without even thinking, you know. People always say to me, oh, you have a great sense of humor. <laughs> and my answer is, I feel sorry I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> a story my father was much older than my mother when they got married and uh, once he told me when they got mar married uh, she was so shy because she was a young gay girl uh, that he felt like a, a chick are uh, Red. reddish Red. What? Red. Red, reddish. No, you cannot say reddish. And uh, uh, he, he looked at her at the wedding and he, he had the feeling like she's so embarrassed, like she's standing naked uh, in the wedding. And I made a lot of paintings of a, a lady in a marriage where the man is dressed up quite carefully, and the woman is naked. Where do you come from? Uh, from Tel Aviv, Okay. In the Yemenite section. And my father came from Yemen. He walked two years in the desert to come to Israel at the age of uh, 16. It was 1906. The year. Yeah. The year. My mother came from all Jerusalem. My father is Yemenite and my mother is Spanish descent. Ah, yes. Yeah. Spanish Jews. Yeah. Were some of your family artists? Yeah, my uh, brother, he used to uh, make pantomimes. Oh. Yeah. For many years I painted uh, when I was young fish and pantomimes. Yeah. They yeah. both don't talk. <laughs> yeah. And in the other room we have more stuff, more interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. He, <laughs> he has not been uh, working a lot on, like, he hasn't been doing oils for the past few years. No. Uh, because of his health. Yeah. Uh, but as you see, many gouaches. Oh, yeah. yeah. Beautiful ones. Yeah. And uh, these are our three sons. <laughs> <laughs> and our... And our daughter. With, and this boy is now going to the army next in two months. And a very important moment in Benjamin's history is when we came to the U.S. in 1965, we were young and naive and uh, had no money at all. And one day we were walking in Greenwich Village with our friends, and Benjamin didn't know any English. So he, all of a sudden, we see that he's going forward, and he starts speaking to a duck in the middle of the street. And we, we approach, and all of a sudden, we see on the stoop next to it a guy sitting. And he starts talking to us. And I said, um, Benjamin is uh, an artist from Israel. He doesn't speak English. So he said, oh, I'm Jewish too. His name was Zvi Marmelstein. And he started talking to us and he said, you know what? Downstairs I have in my basement 
a studio for printmaking. And I want to show it to you. So we go downstairs and all these machines for etchings and lithographs and all kinds of techniques for uh, printmaking. He shows us around and he, he says, I'm going to tell you something, you tell him and you will never forget what I said. And he said, from now on, the center of the art world is no longer Paris, it's moving to New York. And the next hot thing is printmaking. And Benjamin should go and study printmaking. And I said, we have absolutely no money, hardly for food. And how can we he go to school? So he said, there is the Pratt Graphic Art Center in Manhattan, in Low Manhattan, on, I think it was 14th Street and Broadway. You call them, you tell them I sent you there, and maybe well, they'll give him a work scholarship so he can clean up the place in return for learning printmaking. And bring first an oil painting or so, because he did paint at home and to show them what he does. Mm -hmm. Benjamin already has had several one-man shows in Tel Aviv before, with very good reviews. Mm -hmm. So it's, he didn't come from nothing. And when he went there and he saw what etching is about, he immediately knew how to do it and to show others how to do it because he used to be a photo engraver. Mm -hmm. He studied that a few years before. You know, the ones that we don't use anymore to put the pictures in the Newspaper is the same technique with the etchings, yeah. with the zinc plates and everything goes with it in no time. And that's how we started to make etchings. We had no money for good paper, so the first ones were on very simple paper. And we knew very few people in Manhattan. We lived on West 91st Street near Riverside in a tiny, tiny apartment that a friend got us the walk up. And some neighbors on the same street have bought a print for a few dollars, just a few dollars. A few days later, they call us and they say, listen, we have a guy here who, who is completely in love with the piece. Can he come and maybe look at your other etchings? So the guy came. It turns out he has a gallery on Lexington Avenue and 57th Street at the heart of Manhattan selling prints. And he took a lot and he started selling them like hot, uh, what do you call, buns. And that's how we started to stand on our feet. Wow. Because of the duck. <laughs> that's the story of the duck. Beautiful. Yeah. Really fantastic. And we have many ducks in the garden. Too, you <laughs> yeah, know. I know. <laughs> it follows us all over, yes.
So when you are doing your sculptures, because one thing is to do paintings and drawings and stuff, it's a much grander work to start working with the sculptures, yes? Yeah, it started like uh, 25 years in, ago. In 1984-85, the one over there, the reclining lady, the large one, Yeah. that was the first one he brought. Mm -hmm. And he, I remember he said, one day when we'll have enough money, I'll start to do bronze casting because it's very expensive. Of course. So, uh, so meanwhile, he painted. Mm -hmm. or paintings and washes, mm -hmm. and do many drawings, and mm -hmm. he did etchings, mm -hmm. all kinds of printmaking. Yeah. And then uh, he started with a sculpture, about 84, 85, something like that, mm -hmm. the year, yeah. And then he did many, as you see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he keeps uh, planning more and more. They are just amazing. Yeah. There is also the picture and the sculpture of the magician with the coffee pot or the teapot on the yeah. Is that also from your dreams? Or? Some from my dream and some I always explain to people just to put a portrait, to paint the portrait, it's not interesting. But if you add an object, it makes it more interesting. I didn't think carefully about it, but you know, sometimes it reminds me uh, the teapot as life is very steaming, you know? A lot of pressure we have in life. It's hard to tell what is, what is my favorite because, you know, by the year you change mm -hmm. the ideas and feelings. So uh, it's hard to point. Like today. But, but uh, look here, it's a painting mm -hmm. from many, many years ago. Mm. 63. 63. I, I like it. Was that some of your first paintings? That's uh, my family, part of my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we are uh, uh, 11 brothers and sisters. So, uh, is, you would say that this family picture, is that still your favorite work? No, it's, it's, uh, it's just... one of my favorite. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I've done it many, many years ago. His family, yeah? Yeah, and it is very special and it's very beautiful. Yeah. Very beautiful. Thank you. So women plays a very important part. And I think it's like the universal feminine principle that you are painting all the time. Maybe, maybe. Don't you feel that? Yeah. It's like something... Look, I appreciate very much. I think women are uh, uh, more, from my point of view, more uh, spatial than men. Mm. I think so. I think all men think that. So you, you, you paint from a very masculine perspective. Yes. Yes? And that's very lovely, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, I always paint. I start painting every day, five o'clock in the morning. For how long? Until five o'clock in the evening. You paint all day? Yes. You know, I made the... I stop sometime for relaxation, mm -hmm. but basically I paint all day. Wow. Yeah. Ha'efroach nam baken 